let's welcome in our next guest, uh, Somekanti Ghosh, uh, Chief Economic Advisor at SPI. Uh, Mr. Ghosh, if you could just tell us about uh, the you know, pickup in deposits, which uh, everybody seems to be worried about, that a lot of money may actually come back and there would be no windfall gains. What, are, what is your analysis? Uh, no, I think uh, if you look into the data as of such, there has been, if you look into the part-day deposit trends, obviously the part-day deposit trends which was happening, say, in the first week of November has slowed down from there. And uh, the, uh, there is a lot of figures which are actually coming out. And I'm not sure whether uh, uh, the numbers which have been uh, coming out, I mean, whether they are actually, uh, it's a true reflection of the, uh, uh, true reflection of the actual amount because there is a lot of other definitional issues which are concerned over here. In any case, we are expecting that around maybe 13 billion of amount of money could be coming back into the system. So that could leave at least, say, 2 to 2.5 lakh crores as the money not coming back into the system at the end of this complete exercise. Right. Uh, and uh, that would lead to a decent windfall gain? See, these are the things which the government and the RBI needs to work out. So, obviously, I mean, we, we can differ on the amount of money which will be coming back. It could be, I mean, 2 lakh or 1 lakh or 2.5, whatever is the amount. But at the end of the day, I mean, any amount which will come back will provide a fiscal space for the government. Because uh, and that could actually be some sort of a stimulus for the economy in the current scenario. Right. Uh, so, you know, assuming the numbers that you're going that at least two, two and a half lakh crores may not come back into the banking system. Do you expect, uh, you know, you know, this move, of course, will have an impact on uh, the growth rates. And that's why in the in, in, in your probably the next budget or maybe between Jan to March, you expect a lot of uh, you know, fiscal stimulus from the government for various sectors, which which actually see a negative impact? See, I mean, the how fast the economy will rebound. Actually, this, this there is a matter of, I mean, still a conjecture because there are clearly two camps. One camp which is saying that the impact could be a little prolonged. The other camp saying the impact could actually be shortened. Could be shortened and the economy could see a pickup sooner than later. In our view, I think it's, Still too early to talk about the demonetization impact, even though we are sure that this, the growth rate could be hit. But what is important is that how fast the money which is being deposited in the banks actually uh, is taken out from the system. Initially, when this money was getting deposited, I mean, almost less than 10% of the money was coming out. Currently, the run rate has significantly increased. And once this restriction goes, if we get into a, say, a normal run rate of 80 to 85 percent of the deposits which are coming back to the system goes out of the system, so that will lead to an recovery which could be better than expected and sooner than later. So everything will depend on how quickly we are able to uh, relax the withdrawal limits uh, which we have put in uh, currently a system in the banking system, and the sooner it goes, it will be better. Uh, for the economy to stage a rebound in that manner. Right. Uh, you know, we had an exclusive interaction with the finance minister last week where uh, he said that, uh, you know, it's unlikely that uh, the printing of the money may be as much as what it is currently right now. That's already built into the numbers when you say that withdrawal limits are open. See, the money, the printing of the currency, as I understand right now, is basically, uh, I mean, uh, 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 the government is now printing, I think the RBI is now printing the 500 rupee notes. So, and at the end of the day, I think around 15.4 million trillion amount of currency has to be replaced. So, in our sense, uh, I think this will be a graded step. So, may not be the entire amount. So, you can actually see over the next one or two months, the entire amount of currency getting replaced. So, my sense is that as of now, it is getting factored in. Right. Uh, in terms of banks and the deposits that we are seeing, you expect at least 5 to 10 percent of the money to be retained in the banking system? At least, I think it should be around 10 to 15 percent of the money should be retained in the banking system. And uh, we are expecting that if that is the case, there could be around permanent uh, deposit increase of around, say, 1.5 to 2 trillion in the banking system after adjusting for the withdrawal and all the CRR and seller requirements. So maybe at the end of the day, the banking system deposits could be higher by around 1.5 lakh crores or so in the current scenario. 
Right. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, RBI policy, it'll be the first policy after this big step. It'll probably be the first time when, you know, there'll be a question-answer session with uh, the RBI governor post, uh, you know, this entire big demonetization process. Uh, firstly, what do you expect on the rates? And secondly, in terms of commentary, in terms of any additional measures, are you expecting any measures to, you know, uh, you know get rid of this excess liquidity that banks have now? No, I think as of now, if I, if I just give you the numbers, basically the six trillion MSS announcement what the RBI has made is, I think is more than sufficient. And I expect that uh, once, because the withdrawal limit, once they are, they go away, and once we get on to the second fortnight of December and then move further, I think the incremental CRR possibly needs to be discontinued or the RBI should give out a clear roadmap that when you are going to phase it out. Because currently it is acting as a drag on the system and because of this, the cost of the MCLR cost of the banks have also gone up. So if we want that the transmission should continue to happen at the same pace, I think the first thing the RBI may actually withdraw the uh, incremental CRR one and in terms of a rate cut, in rate cut one, I think the RBI may cite a downside risk to GDP growth rate and an inflation forecast without explicitly coming out with a number. Because I think all of us now are in an, uh, currently in a preliminary exercise to try to, trying to understand what could be the ultimate impact. So they could give a downside risk estimates without changing the number. The number. And in my sense, I don't rule out even a 50 basis point rate cut in the forthcoming monetary policy on December 7th. Right. Um, this uh, liquidity situation at this point of time, um, uh, uh, Mr. Kosh, what is it like? Uh, we've got the uh, temporary CRR, which is sucked out uh, liquidity. Then we got MSS announcement on Friday. Uh, at this point of time, what is the situation like with the banks? So I think the liquidity situation is quite comfortable. I mean, if I just give you some numbers over here, uh, uh, numbers basically... For example, um, uh, the total incremental CRR, which has been abolished on the, uh, which has been imposed on the banks, that has actually led to withdrawal of liquidity of around 3.6 trillion. Then the reverse repo outstanding currently is around 2 trillion. The GSEC auctions, the MSS, which has been done, and the Treasury bill auctions. So all these adds to amount 6.2 trillion amount of liquidity, which has been absorbed by the RBI. So that is the first thing first scenario. So currently, the RBI has done enough liquidity uh, withdrawal. The second thing is that I said, if we take out, if we look into the expected net increase in deposits at the end of December, that means the permanent liquidity which will remain in the banking system after withdrawal, CRR and SLR should be around 1.5 trillion. And the MSS ceiling is around 6 trillion, which the government RBI has actually notified. So I think right now, we are okay with the liquidity one. And if the CRR incremental goes, I think that will be better for the banks in terms of transmission. What if there are further MSS operations? No, MSS operation will happen. So basically, after 6 trillion, and that has to happen because at the end of the day, I mean, with so much amount of um, liquidity is uh, stoshing in the system. I think that's why they have taken a ceiling of 6 lakh crores. My point which I'm trying to make is that the incremental 3.6 lakh crores of PRR, which has, imp which has been impounded from the banks, that could actually be abolished because I think that over a point of time, if you also take into account the credit requirement, the net liquidity in the bank system, I think the MSS ceiling of 6 lakh crores looks adequate at this point of time, even without an incremental CRR requirement. Right. But then what happens to this money that has been parked uh, uh, with the RBI? The RBI said that they will do a review. Do you think that it will come back to the banks at all? Because they will fa be faced with withdrawals also, say, by uh, end of this month. Exactly. So basically, that's why this money needs to come back to the banking system sooner than later. Because as you move along, as you move to the second fortnight of December, the withdrawal should actually start picking up. Because I expect that the withdrawal limit could be discontinued maybe next month or, or could be reviewed for the second fortnight of month. So once that is done, there will be a faster amount of withdrawal of deposits from the banking system. And in that case, the banks, and given the fact that there could be some amount of credit pickup, which we, which we is not, which has not happened in the last month because of this exercise. And it is further, it is more important that this CRR impounded money comes back to the banking system so as to take care of all these uh, factors. Right, Mr. Ghosh, you said you wouldn't be surprised if the RBI goes ahead with a 50 basis point cut. Uh, what, what do you think will be the impact on the currency? 
uh, because the the Fed meet is also lined up in December, and uh, you know the data is showing the U.S. economy is doing pretty well. So uh, now the chances of a Fed rate hike, the expectations are hundred percent. So uh, do you think that will add to the outflow pressure, the fund outflow uh, pressure the rupees facing? See, not exactly. I'll tell you an interesting part over here. I think regarding the Fed, that yes, Fed is going to hike rates is almost a hundred percent probability. But let me, let me give a contrarian point of view. When Dr. Rajan was the governor, currently the interest differential, I think why a lot of people are talking about that possible pressure on the rupee because there could be capital outflows because currently the interest differential is, is, is quite is lower. But if you look at the example of when Dr. Rajan was the governor in the, the period FI16, the total amount of capital outflows were 2.5 billion. I am talking about the portfolio capital outflows. Even though the interest differential between the U.S. 10-year Treasury and the Indian 10-year Treasury was around 580-odd basis points. So the short point which I'm trying to make is that it's, and as you see rightly, currently the rupee is actually appreciating. So my point which I'm trying to make is that global factors will be important in the direction of the rupee value, but not to the extent which the market participants may believe, because right now the most important factor which could influence the direction of the rupee value is the demonetization exercise and how quickly are we able to get back to the normal. So my sense is that some little pressure on the rupee could happen, but in general, the rupee should stabilize once this demonetization exercise is we are able to understand and this exercise comes to an end. So I am not too much bothered about the capital outflow, even in the even in the case when the Fed goes for a rate hike. Right. Uh, say if the commentary from the Fed is uh, not that dovish as the street is expecting, would that be a big risk off or you think it will be very, very temporary like we saw in Jan, Feb at the start of this year? No, I don't think that's a risk of event. I mean, whatever Fed says, the Fed could actually, I mean, now that I think that now the markets have also factored in the rate hike. So uh, my only sense is that now the domestic factors are more important in the direction of the rupee value and uh, the, the demonetization exercise. And also the fact that if you remember, the HCNRB outflow has now ended in the end of November. So that is another positive thing which has gone out of the window. So my sense is that there could be some amount of sell-off in the market but that will be limited, and my sense is that the appreciating pressure on the Fed, there is likely to be an appreciative bias of the rupee if the aftermath of this demonetary exercise is taken into account in a proper and adequate manner. Right. You know, this will lead to numbers not looking that good. So we got the services PMI for the 9th of November just a, a while back, which came in at 46 versus 54. Uh, do you think markets have already discounted or, you know, investors... Corporates who invest quite heavily into, uh, you know, different capex have already factored in that the next four five months may not be that great. Uh, but uh, if if you're confident that if things are done properly, uh, the recovery will be faster, and that's why investments would continue. Now, see, um, let me just clarify also one for even suppose if the demonetization has had not happened, even then we would have expected that the IIP growth numbers or the industrial growth numbers for the next couple of months would have been weak. Because there is in a couple of, if you remember last October, the growth rate was more than 8% or so. So there are several factors involved. But as of now, I don't see any sustained improvement in the IP numbers and it could be even negative for the next couple of months. So to that extent, you are yes. And as we say, I think the public invest, the private investment should also remain weak because there has been also a significant amount of deleveraging by the corporates. And I think that is now more important rather than the other things. So in my sense, therefore, that is more imperative for the government to push the economy in terms of an increase in public investment because that's now things I believe is the only way out to get out of this current tricky situation. Right. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, corporate profitability will take a hit, but going into the budget, uh, say if there is a decent windfall gain for the government, uh, a lot more people come into the tax bracket or, you know, into the banking system, uh, do you expect that tax rate will come down, rates in the system, the RBI rate cuts that you just spoke about uh, would happen? That in turn would make a lot of projects viable uh, versus current situation where things may not be as viable? No, I think uh, always. In fact, I mean, corporates would always prefer to have a, interest rate, a lower interest rate regime. And I also don't think why that should not be the case. But in my sense, uh, as of now, my our entire I mean focus should be on the current exercise and how quickly we can get back into the normal, because 
the uh, in our estimates it could take around one or two months to get the entire amount of the printed money back into the system so my, my sense is that the uh, let us not look into the profitability numbers as of now but in the union budget the point which you are saying the government there could be in fact some tinkering with the uh, rates uh, uh, just to uh, give a uh, push the feel good factor a little more and if the government is able to spend a lot on the infrastructural activity say even if suppose if it earmarks 50000 crores 75000 crores but well, even 10000 crores of money is at a premium for the budget that will do a world of good to the government fiscal situation because right now it is completely constant in terms of spending money so therefore i mean even if i said even in the hypothetical scenario that there is no significant windfall i'm just guessing for example if suppose even if say 50000 crores of money whatever amount of money will comes to the government coffer that will be a bonus at the end of the day right uh, mr ghosh thank you so much for uh, giving us uh, your uh, analysis on what to expect in terms of deposit how things would go ahead for the economy